Hare Krishna, dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Welcome to His Holiness Chandramali Maharaj's daily online uh, class. And today uh, yeah. we'll be continuing. Yes. Make yourself visible. I can, all I can see is the mantra. Mm. Can, you, can you see it now, Maharaj? Not the class, you. You're, you're going to start the program. Am I not visible to you, Maharaj? Let me, let me see here. How to make you visible? Okay, let's see. We're getting close. Okay. Yeah. Get the full screen up of all the devotees. Go to gallery, hit on gallery and open it up. Yes, Mara, that's what I have got here on my side. But I don't have it up here. I have little boxes with the vote, the, the uh, thing in the, with the, uh, with the, with the bar with in the background. Start again. Yes. So, dear devotees, welcome again uh, to His Holiness Chandamuli Maharaj's daily online class. And today we'll be continuing with uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 9, Prayers of uh, Bhishma Dev. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisance. Is all glory to Shri Prabhupada. Very well, Passing away of grandfather Bhishma in the first canto, ninth chapter. This is verse number 29. Dharma Bhavata Satya Sankhava Prayu Pastitaha Yo Yogi Nashadam with your Vansitas Tutarayana. Translation. While Bhishma Day was describing occupational duties, the sun's course ran into the northern hemisphere. This period is desired by mystics who die at their will. The perfect yogis or mystics can leave the material body at their own sweet will at a suitable time and go to a suitable planet desired by them. In the Bhagavad Gita 8.24, it is said that self-realized souls who have exactly identified them with the interests of the Supreme Lord. I did this verse already, yeah. I did this verse yesterday. Or the day before. Yeah, go to the next verse. Okay. Pado pasam rita gira, pado pasam rita gira, sahasra nira, vimutta sangamara ar purushe, krishne lasa sita pata chatur buje, puran sita. Now hold it, hold it there, for, hold it there for a minute. Huh? Don't move things. I can't see it now, it's locked. Okay. The goal for some return here, Sahasranir, we move the Sangam Mara Al Purushani. Chris Naila Satita Patacha Tur Bujay, Puram Sitam Milita Drig Vagaraya. Translation. Thereupon, that man who spoke on different subject matters, with thousands of meanings and who fought on thousands of battlefields 
and protected thousands of men stopped speaking and being completely free from all bondage, withdrew his mind from everything else, fixed his wide open eyes upon the original personality of Godhead. Sri Krishna, who stood before him, four handed, dressed in yellow garments that glittered and shined. Purport, in the momentous hour of leaving his material body, Bhishma Dev set the glorious example of concerning the important function of the human form of life. The subject matter which Shakshak, the dying man, becomes the beginning of his next life. This has been italicized. The subject matter which attracts the dying man becomes the beginning of his next life. Therefore, if one is absorbed in thoughts of the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna, we're sure to go back home, back to Godhead with any doubt. This is confirmed from the Bhagavad Gita. 8.5 through 15, the verses are over here. And whoever at the time of death quits his body remembering me alone, at once it changed my nature. Of this, there is no doubt. Whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body, that state he will attain without fear. Therefore, Arjun, you should always think of me in the form of Krishna, at the same time carry out your prescribed duty of fighting. With your activities dedicated to me and your mind and intelligence fixed on me, you will attain me without doubt. He who meditates on the Supreme Personality of Godhead, his mind constantly engaged in remembering me, undeviated from the path of heart, is sure to reach me. One should meditate upon the Supreme Person as the one who knows everything, as he who is the oldest, who is the controller, who is the smallest of the small, who is the main thing or everything, who is beyond all material conception, who is inconceivable. There's always a person who is luminous like the sun and being transcendental is beyond this material nature. Verse 10, one who at the time of death fixes his life here between the eyebrows and in full devotion engages himself to remember the Supreme Lord will certainly attain to the Supreme Person in the world. That is, persons learned in the Vedas of other Amkara and who are great sages in the renounced order enter into Brahman. Desiring such per perfection, one practices celibacy. I shall now explain to you this process by which one may attain. Salvation. The, yogi, the yogic situation is that of detachment from all sensual engagement. Closing the doors of the senses and fixing the mind on the heart and the light there at the top of the head, one establishes himself in yoga. After being situated in this yoga practice, vibrating the sacred OM, with the supreme combination of letters, if one thinks of the supreme personality, that is, and quits his body, he certainly reaches the spiritual pleasures. For one who remembers me without deviation, I'm, I'm easy to obtain, O son of Krishna, because his constant engagement in devotional service. After attaining me, the great souls or yogis in devotion never return to this material temple and world, which is full of miseries because they obtain the highest perfection. So here, Krishna. Uh, gives us 10 verses, 11 verses actually, of uh, the process of attaining perfection. Sri Bhishma Dev attained the perfection of quitting his body at will and was fortunate enough to have Lord Krishna, the object of his attention, attention personally present at the time of his death. He therefore, therefore fixed his open eyes upon him. He wanted to see Krishna for a long time and his spontaneous love for him. Because he was a pure devotee, he had very little to do with the detailed performance of yoga principles. Simply bhakti yogi is enough to bring about perfection. Therefore, the ardent desire of Vishma Dev was to see the person of Lord Sri Krishna, the most lovable object. And by the grace of the Lord, Sri Vishma Dev had this opportunity at the last stage of his freedom. When the young commit on the young and on the young, and the Saksu Unnam is on the other person. Three little young in the heart, among Vishnu Paraya, Krishna, 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 Krishna
amounts of restaurants all over the world and big cities such as New York or London have tens and thousands of restaurants literally and people can go anywhere and everywhere and enjoy their centers and different types of foodstuffs they've created so many ways by which people can sleep different kinds of beds, different kinds of comforts that come with different kinds of beds, different men, just like they have warehouses full of mattresses. It's simply a product of trying to sleep. That's all, which is a, a propensity of the body. And therefore, they're looking for ways you can be comfortable while you're sleeping, even though you're sleeping and cannot experience the comfort. Uh, so, and then, of course, defense. They're always thinking of how to defend their evil, sleeping, and of course, mating. And so they don't follow any rules and regulations for mating. They're more like animals uh, that mate whenever they feel the urge. And uh, they follow very little restrictions in that area. And if they're forced to, sometimes they follow a restriction only because of being forced to. But otherwise, the whole process of material life is to uh, expand eating, sleeping, mating, and to find different ways by which you can defend these three things by having dogs, gates, locks, guards, uh, various types of ammunition, and making a big national budget, which takes up all of the tax money, members' money, simply for defense. But it's not about defense. It's about um, aggression, more or less. I mean, they use the word defense. But in the same sense, they're also thinking we have to defend our eating, sleeping, mating, and mating in different ways. And so this defending is a is one of the main principles of the animal kingdom. Animals have teeth, claws, nails, and various types of things given by God in order to defend themselves because animals are helpless. And so they require something to protect themselves, which is part of their nature. We are given hands, and legs, and an intelligence by which we can protect ourselves. But we've made a business out of protection. We made it a focus in different ways to protect. But it says one of the easiest ways to protect us is to keep distance from those who you are your enemy. That's it. <laughs> or those who will cause harm to you. But this is going on in material life. And therefore, um, they simply miss the chance to understand the value of human life. And as it says in the, in the 16th canto, 
I'm sorry, 16th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, they gratify their senses all the way to the end of life, not wanting to lose even a moment of sense gratification. Even when they're dying, they're still thinking of how to make plans for the family members to carry on what they started. Uh, they, they're still making plans, although they're not going to be around. <laughs> so this is materializing it's ridiculous. There's no basis in anything sensible. But a devotee thinks, uh, how much time do I have in this material world? And I could go at any time. No one, uh, Balad Maharaj would say to his schoolmates, who would teach them the science of Bhakti Yoga. And they were also sons of demons. They were also maybe friends of Harani Kashipu, his associates. And these were their children, and they were all going to school in this one place where they had two uh, brahmanas, Sanda and the Marka, taking care of the kids. And they were also the Dumani of nature, they were Sansukaracharya. And but Prahlad Maharaj took the opportunity to preach Krishna consciousness to his schoolmates when the teachers were not around or they were being in recess when they were out playing. And a student, the, the, Children would sometimes say to Pilar, 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 what you're saying is very nice. But we're children, we need to play. We want to, you know, when we get old, we can think about all of these things. Not now. But Pilar Maharaj was very, you know, we say, understanding of the, how life works. He said, old means just before you die, no one knows when they're going to die. So death is not. Death is sure, but death is not certain when it will happen because death makes no notice. Sometimes the person is quite fine. They go to the doctors, the doctors give an analysis. You have this terminal cancer, you have six months to live. Uh, so make your plans. <laughs> so all of a sudden, uh, someone takes the vaccination and, and gets sick and dies because of that, and thinking that they're going to get healthy. So, so many ways, you know, death comes upon people that uh, is unexpected. And because of that, um, people uh, are wasting their time simply in frivolous activities where the body is thinking, I don't know how much time I have left, but let me use whatever time I have to become fully Krishna conscious. Then when death comes, then I have achieved perfection in life. So here, as I mentioned, the devotee fixes his mind upon the Supreme Personality of Godhead in the execution of his devotional service. As Krishna mentioned, you can go down the page. There's one of the, one of the uh, verses here. It says, keep going. Yeah, right there. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, let's see. Therefore, Arjun, number seven, you should always think of me in the form of Krishna. At the same time, carry out your prescribed duty of fighting. With your activities ded dedicated to me and your mind intelligence fixed on me, you will attain me without doubt. This is a very powerful statement. Krishna said, think of me and carry out your duty at the same time. And by focusing your mind and intelligence on me, you will achieve me a samsaya samadraha, in other words, without any doubt. So Krishna gives the formula, here's how to attain me. So we have many duties to perform, both material to take care of family and to earn some type of uh, pecuniary uh, situation to take care of our needs. And therefore that's full occupation. And we need to somehow or other do things in order to fortify these things with family and occupation. But we should always remember Krishna. And that's the point, whatever you do. And of course, when we engage in devotional service, we're in the care of the uh, Daivi Prakriti, the spiritual energy. But Krishna still says, you should focus your activities on me and at the same time, think of me. And that completes the consciousness. In other words, not only is the activities being performed for Krishna, but the mind is fixed on Krishna 
as the goal of the activity itself to attain, to achieve Krishna, to please Krishna by the activity. So here is the formula, and it's easy if we practice. If we don't practice, it's not possible. One has to practice this consciousness every day. Spiritual life is just a matter of practice. When you know what the program is, and that is why we listen to the verses, to the lectures, to Srila Prabhupada, to understand how the process works, and what is the nature of how to flow, how to execute the process? Then, when we understand that, then we we focus our unconsciousness on Krishna and execute our duties accordingly. And that is yoga. <laughs> that is yoga. Krishna goes on to explain not only for the bhakti yoga but for the mystic yoga here, and how they attain perfection by closing all the, the senses and fixing the mind upon the, uh, the breath and raising the breath to the top of the head and ultimately fixing the mind on Krishna within the heart and attaining perfection in the yoga system. Of course, that is not for this age. Krishna is making that statement as a general statement. There are accomplished yogis who can do that. But in this age, very few will able to be able to attain perfection in that way, because of the age of color. Therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given us a very simple, direct process of self realization, and that is fixing the mind and the, the sound. Tashi Krishna Namari Navavedraya Mudi Sevamuti Hijiva Do Vayam Evas Padakyada. One can attain the highest perfection of life simply by using the tongue. And what is that? That is the vibration of Krishna's holy name. As we chant the holy name and listen to the sound vibration, the consciousness is, becomes elevated to the spiritual platform because Krishna's name is Krishna. As we chant the holy name, the holy name takes us into the spiritual realm. And therefore, then we become fixed on a higher level, we're even above the mode of goodness, we're on the transcendental platform. And therefore, we are not affected by anything that goes on in this material realm. So, of all the forms of uh, remembering Krishna, the easiest, and most direct, and most and highly recommended in this age by Krishna himself, in the form of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, here who is Krishna, is to chant Hare Krishna. We practice this chanting regularly and engage in our devotional service. Gradually, we become purified from material consciousness. In other words, our consciousness stays fixed on the spiritual platform. The mind doesn't wander so much. It may always wander. It's the nature of the mind is to wander. But we can reduce the wandering mind by practice, by focusing on that which is fixed. Well, Krishna's name is not part of the three modes of material nature. It's transcendental. Krishna's Chaitanya Vigraha. Unya Sudhya Krishna Mutya Binna Shun Nami Nami Nam. The holy name of the Lord is not anything a part of this material world. It is completely transcendental, it is liberated. It is not a material sound under any condition. And it takes one's consciousness into the spiritual realm. And as that develops, we actually associate with Krishna through his name, which is pure sound vibration. So here is the way by which we can remember Krishna always. Of course, we can remember Krishna by seeing and worshiping the deity of the Lord. We can remember Krishna simply by thinking of him. We can remember Krishna by hearing about his transcendental pastime, particularly those pastimes as mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam. And there's different ways to remember him, but the easiest and most direct and most powerful way is uh, to chant his holy name. And therefore, uh, now Bhishma Dev was fortunate. Uh, you might say he's fortunate, but he qualified himself to become fortunate by his devotion to Krishna. He was always devoted to Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
and being in the mood of uh, chivalry, Ras, he fought with Krishna with the desire to be defeated by Krishna so he could see Krishna at the end, the last part of his life. So he achieved that and he, because he had the benediction, which is also a mystic power, which describes that there is a mystic power where one can lead the world according to their own desire. One can live as long as they want, and whenever they want to die, they can die. That is a mystic power. It can be perfected, but a devotee is not interested in that. They simply want to serve the Lord, and when the Lord says, now it's time for you to come back to me, the devotee is eager and ready to go. Getting ready means to give up our attempt to enjoy in this material world and simply engage in devotional service. Um, that, and that prepares the consciousness. And then as we go deeper into that consciousness, we can see that everything in this material world ultimately is meant in order to bring us closer to Krishna because it is being provided for us to think of Krishna in relationship to these objects. In other words, anything in this material world is the energy of Krishna. So when we see the energy of Krishna, just like when we see the sunshine, we know it's connected to the sun, which is the source of the shine. So we know anything in this material world, whatever, however it is configured, it is also the energy of Krishna. And therefore, devotee sees Krishna within the energy also and, un and understands that this energy is meant to be used in the service of Krishna. And if we can't use it in the service of Krishna, still we can see it in relationship to Krishna, and that is also Krishna consciousness. So, um, yeah, these, this section of the Bhagavad Gita, eighth chapter, verses five through 50, uh, should be studied carefully, and it teaches you how. You can practice the process and then eventually leave home or leave the world and get back to the spiritual world. In fact, we have a home for our Germany, 90 months, 80 is sore Juna. Krishna is referring to our Juna in the one he speaks this verse, uh, simply remembering me. And he who remembers him at the time of death, as it says in the uh, fifth verse, uh, at once attains his nature. What does that mean? We enter into our, well, not enter into, but we actually develop our spiritual body, which becomes our actual functioning body. In other words, we attain pure spiritual consciousness, and our body is no longer material. It becomes, and the body falls away, and the soul arises to its professional stage. Just like if you associate with heat, you become warm. And the more you associate with that heat, the more you become like that. You keep an iron rod in the fire, the iron rod becomes like fire. And soon the iron rod is no longer an iron rod, it is simply fire. Wherever you touch it, it will have a burning uh, effect. So similarly, in the same way, as we keep our consciousness in Krishna, we will become spiritualize and develop a pure spiritual body and go back to going back to God. That is the process. But it's a matter of directing that consciousness towards Krishna uh, as much as we can and gradually uh, re rejecting and relinquishing those things that mm -hmm. take us away from developing Krishna consciousness. In other words, those things that are part of this material world that drag our consciousness into the idea of sense verification. So one has to practice. Practice, practice, practice. And the more you practice, the more you become proficient at it. And the more you become proficient out of it, the more you learn the science of how to formulate that practice into a, a very fine way that becomes so easy just to remember Krishna. It becomes natural to remember Krishna. When someone asks you a call for, uh, are you remember Krishna, remembering Krishna? Probably said, I can't remember a time when I was not remembering Krishna. 
So this is a perfection of devotion in his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, by his own pure example, showed that, yeah, uh, you can remember Krishna all the time. It is your actual birthright. It is your nature to remember Krishna. To forget Krishna is contrary to our nature. It's our external nature, which is our material nature, which we consider to be more important than our spiritual nature. And that is the problem. That is the problem. So focus your attention on Krishna and chant the holy names and try to remember Krishna in everything you do and try to serve Krishna with a desire to offer that service in a pleasing way, whatever way you can do. If you have that intention, even if it's not perfect, because of the intention, the intention is the perfection. The perfection will follow in due course of time as long as the intention is perfect. As Prabhupada used to say, there's two kinds of pure devotees. There is one who have attained pure consciousness. They are called the pure devotees. They have reached the transcendental platform. And there's another kind who has a pure desire to become a pure devotee and acts according in order to achieve that, although they still may have material desires, still, they focus themselves on the essence and reject any opportunity to fulfill their material desires, always thinking how to become Krishna conscious. And if they follow that, then they will also become reach the transcendental platform. So that's a pure devotee simply by desire. So that is available at any time. Lord Brahma, I believe he was praying that that. Um, let me fix my mind fully on your lotus feet. It is one particular statement Lord Brahma made that uh, very powerful statement where the devotee actually says to the Lord, my dear Lord, I now surrender fully unto you. Whatever it takes for me to, to attain you, I am willing to accept. In other words, one is fully surrendered to whatever the will of Krishna is that would bring them to the perfectional stage of Krishna. So we have to practice. It is available. It is our nature. And many, many who have practiced have achieved perfection. We have examples. Of devotees who obtain perfection. We have devotees, we have examples of devotees who are on the platform of attaining perfection. We have so many examples, both in the scriptures and both in our day to day life. So it is available and it can be understood and practiced simply by following in the footsteps of the great souls, Mahajana, Kataswapanta, following in the footsteps of persons. Who have achieved perfection. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, that was a very wonderful and very powerful uh, explanation of the verse, while it's very important. And uh, as you mentioned, Maharaj, how the whole process of this material life is geared up towards expanding, you know, sleeping, eating, mating, and defending. And even when somebody is dying, they are thinking of how they can expand those activities, pass it on to the family members. And how a devotee is always thinking uh, that I have got very little time and I can die at any time. And let's use the best uh, available time for developing Krishna consciousness. And, I, and my, you also emphasize, Maharaj, very nicely on how to practice because we, we discussed the verse in Bhagavad Gita which is mentioned in the verse today uh, and also how in this age Maharaj this process the yogic process which was described is not possible but the most easiest way which is given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is to chanting of the holy names of Krishna so practice 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 to attain achieve perfection in Krishna consciousness Maharaj so thank you very much for this wonderful uh, verse explanation. Dear devotees, I would uh, encourage 
and humbly plea if uh, you want to uh, turn on your cameras so we can make it a, an interactive sessions and please feel free to share your realizations, questions uh, on this very important subject topic today. Maharaj, whilst the devotees think, uh, I have a quick question, if you allow me. Yes, please. Maharaj, the process mentioned here and here in many places where it says that the yogi, that the yogi with his yogic powers can leave his body at any time and go to any planets. But he cannot go to a spiritual planet. Maharaj, through that process, right? Uh, or can he go to a spiritual process if he's not Krishna conscious? Uh, he, he can only go to the planets that he's qualified okay. to go to. Uh, just like the Rasa Muni. He, uh, he wanted to uh, go see uh, Lord Vishnu in the spiritual world. But he wasn't able to enter into the planet. He could only get onto the outside of it. And he wasn't able to see. And the Lord also didn't appear to him in his original form. The Lord expanded his original form into another form of himself in order to meet the Rasa. He wasn't able to see him in the original form. So, yeah, one can only enter into that realm by which one has achieved that adhikari for that qualification. Sometimes a person can reach the spiritual world, but they can't stay there. Because some powerful yogis can sometimes do that. But they won't be able to stay because they, have, they don't have the qualifications to stay there. But yogis, there are really powerful yogis that can go practically anywhere. But usually into the higher realms of the material existence, they go. Thank you, Maharaj. Sridhari Mataji, you have a question? Please go ahead. Thank you, Ditesh Prabhu. Can you hear me? Please tell me. Yes, Mataji. Clear. Thank you. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my most humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you for today's class. I have a question regarding devotional service. As devotees, we like to be with other devotees. We want to be in holy places. We want to engage in devotional service, chant the holy name. But here I am surrounded by all kinds of people, no devotees. And all I'm doing is chanting my rounds and I'm engaging now in serving my old father because of my training as a medical doctor. Now I'm busy giving him injections and setting up IVs and doing this and that. And I'm thinking to myself, is this devotional service? Is this what Krishna wants me to do? Um, I never expected this to happen, but here I am. And all I can do as a devotee is just chant and that's about the only thing I'm doing as a devotee, but I'm not sure whether this is what I'm supposed to do here. Serving your father was in need. So the duty, you know, generally Prabhupada wanted his disciples not to neglect their parents. It's not that we live with them, but when there is some need and there's no alternative to take care of the parents, it becomes a duty. So in this case, your father is not a materialist. He's, uh, he's a mixed devotee. He's got devotional tendencies. And at the same time, he's very expert in manipulating the material world. So he, he's, uh, he's not a pure devotee, but he has devotional sentiments. He also likes devotees. So in one sense, you're serving someone who has devotional tendencies and the need is there because it says one should serve superiors. So you've been put in that situation because the need is there. So 
you might think, well, it's difficult to become Krishna conscious here. I think it's more easier to become Krishna conscious there because you see everything around you reminds you of Maya. And so being a devotee, you think there's only one way to go. I have to remember Krishna all the time. <laughs> right. Oh, yes, Guru Maharaj. I'm grabbing yeah. my beads and just chanting all the time and begging Krishna, please don't let me forget you in all this. Yeah, so you become. Okay, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Really was doubting what I'm doing. So thank you for pointing it out. You do your best in that situation. And when the time is, arrives, then you will leave that situation and you will be more Krishna conscious. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. My humble obeisance is to you. Thank you, Krishna. Play, play Prabhupada's tapes. Play tapes of your spiritual master. Play, you know, these things you can also play. Hear the sound vibration. Oh, yes, Guru Maharaj. In the hospital, that was all that was playing all the time. Morning, evening, noon, night, 24 hours. <laughs> he was hearing Srila Prabhupada's either lecture, not lectures, but um, songs. All the different songs going on. That was really wonderful in Dr. Vedanta Hospital. I'm just so grateful for that experience. Yeah. His father benefited. Thank you, Namrata Mataji. Uh, please go ahead. Hare Krishna. Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to the assembled devotees. Um, Guru Maharaj, uh, my question is related to chanting. Uh, when I chant, sometimes I'm, I'm mostly uh concentrating on the word uh krishna more so is it advisable my my focus goes more on more on the word krishna out of the eight syllables so um uh is it okay or should i concentrate on all of them equally well you have to Every time you say Krishna, Radharani is happy, and every time you say Hare Krishna is happy. So naturally, it happens to me that my uh, like spontaneous when you uh, when there's some. Um, Maybe some situation where, um, which is, you know, there's a tense situation. I am chanting. I, I, uh, I mean, I want to get out of that situation for which I'm chanting. So then naturally my uh, concentration is going more on the word Krishna rather than other celebrities. <clears throat> it's not program. Krishna. Krishna is I don't see anything wrong with it. Do you? Okay. Seems like Sorry. you. Seems like you're okay. Krishna Dave, all he wanted was Krishna. Lord Chaitanya couldn't think of anything else but Krishna. So I was just wondering that, uh, is it fine? Because for other syllables, I have to make um, uh, an effort, special effort. But uh, naturally, for one word, it goes naturally. If you just think of Krishna all the time, then we're back in the spiritual world. It's That's the problem. If you if that's considered a problem, then uh, yeah, I want that problem also. 
thank you thank you very much Maharaj, I have a question uh, in related to a very important aspect that you say practice, practice, practice. Uh, I have found myself many times when I am executing a job, uh, either I get so absorbed in the task, sometimes for hours, and then I finish the job and then I think, oh, I didn't really remember Krishna. I wasn't really Krishna conscious at all because I was so much focused in getting a thing done so much. And I, I, I do reflect after I do this because I spend hours sometimes finishing a, a task, either it is a work related or service related. But then I think, oh, I really didn't really, I wasn't really Krishna conscious at all. Um, so Maharaj, I would like you to comment on this. Service and if you're absorbed in the service, you're on the transcendental platform. And then Maharaj, what about the material work? So for example, a, a job related activity. Yeah. Well, then, then you better remember Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> Then if you get too much absorbed in that, of course you want to do your material activities in the best possible way also. We don't say you should minimize those, you should do them nicely. But then you should think that I'm a devotee, these other activities, I'm a strong man, I'm a strong man, material occupation in order to get some some enumeration so I can live in this world. So you should think, well, if it wasn't for my spiritual life, you know, all of these other activities would simply drag me down. So re remembering Krishna, remembering why you perform these activities in order so you can facilitate your needs so you can practice Krishna practice. That would be a hostile life. But on a higher level, you can also do everything as a service to Krishna. As Krishna said, Yat Karosi, Yaranasi, Yat Jahosi, Badashi, Yat, Yat Kapasi, Tukunde, Yat Kudushin, Yamatoli. This verse is for Vyastas. All that you do, all that you eat, all that you offer and give away, as well as all austerities you may perform to be done as an offering to me. And Krishna says that in the end, ninth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. All that you do, he didn't say just only those things that you do for me, all that you do to be done as an offering to me. Offer your material things to Krishna and sacrifice. And then they will become somewhat spiritualized. Thank you, Maharaj. On a higher level, we want to stop all these material activities and simply do full devotional service. And that's a progression towards that goal. If not, we're not moving towards that goal, we'll try to expand our material activities to become six, more successful and more nicely placed materially, then, then uh, we can't think of Krishna, nor do we, will, be, will we make progress towards the goal of becoming Krishna. So we call it a necessary burden. But it's a burden. But it's necessary at a certain stage in life. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you. Can I remember Krishna anyway? You're, uh, you're doing something, say you're building a cabinet or something, 
and you'll slip and you hit your finger with the hammer. Krishna. <laughs> so now you became Krishna conscious all of a sudden. <laughs> Devotees, any 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 realizations you want to share? Any any reflections? We have a question from Narsingha Lila Mataji. She she says, "Dear Guru Maharaj, at the beginning of today's class, you mentioned that our so-called civilization is all about expanding comforts. We see that in the Vedic civilization, comfort was also there, but that wasn't really the goal of life." How to see when our comfort at home negatively influence our spiritual progress? Live simply. The basic comforts of life are required. But now that you focus on that as the, to expand them, Prabhupada didn't say you have to live under a tree or have be deficient in your personal needs. He didn't say that. He said, Live nicely, but become Krishna conscious. When you see all of these things that you have are given to you by Krishna, so you can live comfortably and nicely and execute Krishna consciousness. So when we ask the life, we take on a little bit of that in order to, uh, to maintain some kind of uh, rehab, some family life. But Keep it simple. Not that we keep expanding these material comforts and, and to make them better and more. Keep it simple. You should have enough food. You should have a nice place to live. You should have a, you know, everything you need on a personal level. And be very careful not to fall into this pattern of getting more based on the idea that I like it or I need it. That way wastes our time. We could be using that time and energy and resources for Krishna. Simple, try to live simple. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh... Shingalila Mataji, does that answer your question? Thank you. It's a wonderful question. Thanks for asking it. We've got uh, hands raised by Revati Mataji. Uh, please go ahead, Mataji. Yeah, Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guruji. Uh, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my. Yeah. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, thank you for the very nice class. Uh, so, uh, so Guru Maharaj, I was uh, reading this um, Canto 1, where I came across like um, in a seventh chapter, it says, um, like a review of a dormant affection doesn't depend on mechanical system of hearing and chanting, but depends on Lord's mercy. So, so which, how should which, you? Which verse is that? It's 1.7.6. Um, so, yeah, so my question is, Guru Maharaj. Oh, okay. First Kanto, seventh chapter. Sixth verse, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, and it's in the purport. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Oh, this is very, an art to know for now. An art to know. Yeah, it's revival. Uh, so, what is it? Revival of the dormant affection, love of God, it does not depend on the mechanical system of hearing and chanting, but solely and wholly depends on the causeless mercy of the Lord. Yeah. So, what is the question? That's clear. Yes, Guru Maharaj. So just my um, understanding is like, even though we are hearing and chanting, we are putting an effort, 
um sometimes we find like you know uh, the uh, to awaken i mean to get that uh, seriousness is like you know it's kind very challenging so does it mean that uh, we don't have the mercy of the lord or like uh, it's uh, or past karma or something how should we understand yeah. well the body is always dependent upon and pressure upon the mercy of the lord the Lord gives his mercy. He's very merciful. The process of devotion and service is mercy. But the realization that comes by the activities in devotional service come by way of the Krishna's direct intervention. Whereas he, uh, he elevates one or inspires one by their efforts in devotion and service. So, it's just like sometimes we say, if you want to go to a place that um, in other words, to use an example, uh, certain places you can get there, but you can't get in unless somebody lets you in. It might be a secret club or a private club or something. You can drive all the way there, you can dress up nicely, be ready to go. But they don't, only when you when they open the door and let you in can you enter. So in the same way, we make the effort. And Krishna, when Krishna is pleased, then he, he lets us in. He offers his mercy. His mercy helps acts in different ways. It detaches us from matter. It gives us realizations. It uh, attracts us more to Krishna, and it awakens our, our happiness in Krishna consciousness. Uh, that that mercy comes in different ways, but that's dependent on Krishna. You have to understand when you're practicing Krishna consciousness, you're dealing with a person, supreme person. It's not like you can just do things and expect that will give you the results. We make the effort. We try to do everything with devotion. And Krishna will reciprocate in due course of time. Sometimes immediately. Sometimes after some time. But in any case, he's always reciprocating. Okay, Karma. So we should continue to do the efforts and leave everything to Krishna. So yeah, don't try to be happy in Krishna consciousness. Just try to come to it. Happiness will come more Okay. Yes, thank you. So um, if you're feeling, if you're not, if you're, if you're trying to squeeze out the happiness principle, you might be wasting your energy in the wrong direction. To serve nicely, let us serve nicely. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. And one more question, Guru Maharaj, about uh, remembering Krishna. Um, it should be done in a prayerful mood. We are chanting, but also throughout the day. Yeah. Anything we do, okay, I say, thank you, Krishna. Thank you. Thank you for everything. So like that, we keep saying that. So is that also the right way to remember Krishna? Krishna doesn't say there's a right way. He says, remember me. Okay. Just remember yeah. Krishna. There's demons remember Krishna in anger and they get some benefit also. But that's not for the world. Somehow or other. Remember Krishna. Okay. So when you really remember Krishna with love and devotion, then you are you are actually expressing your actual nature in relationship to Krishna. But the benefit of remembering Krishna is there in any form. But when it's done with love. It is the perfection of remembrance.
Thanks very much. Thank you so much for that point. So it should be done with uh, pure love. So then that's the perfection. <laughs> Yes, perfection, but even if you don't have that love, somehow we it. So. <laughs> yes, good much. Thank you. Yeah. Just remember this one. Uh, sometimes love just doesn't flow. It's something we just don't feel something. But still, remember it's perfect. Yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. That was a very relevant question. And thank you, Maharaj, for answering it wonderfully. Uh, Radha Vinodini Mataji, uh, you have a question. Please go ahead. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. Our Guru is to Srila Prabhupada and our Guru is to you. Um, there was one thing which uh, really struck me of what, what you said today, that uh, <clears throat> actually Bhishma Dev's desire was uh, for Krishna to win. And uh, I was just thinking that uh, it's such a difficult task when someone has to do everything uh, which he's capable to do totally against his desire. Because uh, so he desired Krishna to win, but uh, the service was to, to act against it. And how is it possible? Or I, I don't know, it was just really uh, difficult to, for me to understand this. I gave a whole class on it, that's recorded. It was, uh, it was in Ljubljana. The class was posted on the ISKCON thing. And you can, if you go to the ISKCON news things, every time I get one, I send it to the whole conference. Mm -hmm. um, I sent one today with one of my classes on it, but there was one that I sent a couple of days ago also, and it was about that same subject to describe in detail what mm -hmm. was the, the mindset of Beach today. We wanted to show the world that no matter how great and powerful you are, if you're against Krishna, you lose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering, is it also connected with uh, the principle that we don't desire the results of our actions? Is it connected with? Is it also connected uh, with us not desiring the results of the of our actions? I'm not sure I understood that statement. Speak it a little slower, it doesn't seem to make sense to me. Mm -hmm. So, uh, is, is this mood connected uh, that we, we don't, don't uh, expect, uh, don't desire for, for any results? Because, <clears throat> sorry, I mean that he, he didn't want to... You know that course is wherever there is a prayer, there's a desire. We all have desire. So we want to give up the false desire to desire something in relationship to the material existence and desires desire Krishna. So devotee wants Krishna, the devotee wants to be with Krishna, the devotee wants to serve Krishna, the devotee wants to please Krishna. The one who wants to hear about Krishna activities. So these are spiritual desires. And these are, you can't be desireless. You're desireless, you're dead. You're a stone. You just have to change your desire from material to spiritual. Desire is life. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I I will contemplate a, a bit on this one. <laughs> Thank well, you. What do you, what do you want? Do you want Krishna or do you want something else? Oh, well, I, I hope I only want him. <laughs> Unfortunately, my actions at this point show something else, but <laughs> uh, I mean... Uh, we have a mixture of desires. We want Krishna, we want a little bit of material satisfaction too. 
So that means the ear looks the body. I'm I'm working on it. <laughs> when you understand that anything, any desire other than Krishna doesn't can never give you satisfaction. You start understanding why waste time with those things. Yeah, that's true. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mataji. Ma mm. Maharaj, we have we have yeah. one question in the question chat the window. Yeah. Asha. Um, this will be the last question. I have to leave after this. Yes, Maharaj. Um, so the question is, uh, please accept my humble obeisances. Guru Maharaj, continuing with Shingalila Mataji's question, how to see when there is no comforts at home, with the, when there are challenges in resources, and how can that not influence negatively on the spiritual path? And it is said that God knows what is best for a devotee, so it is God's plan. It affects the one who is living with you, whether the dog or the daughter. It is also from them a God's plan according to their own karmas, and they are also going through the challenges. Read it again. Yes, Maharaj. Uh, so the question is, is in relation to Nashinga Lila Mataji's question before about uh, uh, material home comforts. So the question is how to see when there are no comforts at home. And when there are challenges in resources and how that cannot influence negatively on the spiritual path. Because it is said that God knows what is best for a devotee and so everything is God's plan. And because of that, it affects the one who is also living with you, whether it's a dog or your own daughter. But then also it is said that it is God's plan according to their own karmas that they're going through the sufferings and the challenges. So, so what's the question? The question is that is it also that God plans that they, that according to the karmas, the one that who, who is also living with you, they are, uh, they are suffering? Uh, and please correct me. Sorry. If that's the, sorry bro. If their suffering is based on them, them living with you, then they can choose not to live with you. But if they, they said that wherever you go, you take your mind with you. So sometimes people think, well, if I change my situation, my things will get better. But you have to change your consciousness. That's it. Then wherever you go, the consciousness is what carries you from place to place. Not the situation may be favorable or, or more favorable or less favorable, but it doesn't really matter. It's your consciousness. So you might say it's because of their karma, they're in that particular situation. But they can go and change their situation and then the, the distress that comes from that situation might be gone. But then again, that distress will come in another form. Just like according to your karma, you're gonna get Happiness and distress, you can't change that. You get so much happiness and so much distress. So you might think, well, you know, I'm in, a, I'm in a cold place and it's very, let me go to a warm place. So you stop the suffering of cold, but because your karma is there, you're destined to get some other kind of suffering. So you ride your bicycle and you fall off, you break your leg or something. So, you know, in other words, from the material point of view, you can't decrease or increase your good and bad karma. It's fixed. Mm -hmm. The only way you can change your karma is to come to devotional service. So in reference to people who are experiencing a situation, you know, they're, they're going to get what they, they're meant to get. 
but the forms by which it comes may change. That's it. The amount can't change, the forms can change. That's it. So sometimes devotees, a devotee will think, well, this place is no good. I'll be better off in this place. But if you're meant to suffer, even if you go to the other place, you may not get the same kind of discomfort, but you'll get the, you'll get the discomfort in another way. That's it. If that's, that's destined to happen in that one. But as you increase your devotional service, then you gradually wipe away the effects of your karma, both uh, good and bad, or both pious and impious. So that's reduced by devotional service. But from the materialists, they can't do that. They're destined to suffer so much. They're destined to get so many material benefits according to their karma. And the karma pushes them to think and act in a certain way, and therefore they perpetuate their karma in a certain direction. That's why people sometimes think if they just change their way of thinking, they can change their results of their activities. That's true up to a certain point, but because the influence of karma will still push you in the direction that it's meant to push you in, you'll still get the results of your activities good or bad, in the same proportion. You can't change them. The only way you can change it is come to devotion and service. Thank you, Maharaj, for answering this wonderfully. Because you have to understand, in the material world, there's nothing good. Badra Abrada Sakale Saman He Manda He Bada He Bamas. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Mahaprabhu said, some people say this is good, and other people say this is bad, but I'm I say it is all bad because it's material. So from the absolute point of view, everything in the material world is bad. Even the so-called good. Is bad because it is, it is because it's material. It is like, you know, you're walking along the streets and it's a nice street and you think, oh, this is so nice. And the next day you're walking along the same street and you think it's not so nice. So one day you think it's nice, and one day you think it's not nice. I'll give you a personal example. When I was in Denver, Colorado, I, uh, I got snowed in. There was a huge blizzard and the entire city was snowed in. I couldn't go anywhere. And so for me, it was fine. I could just sit there and chant and do programs where I was and couldn't couldn't move around hardly. All the schools were closed, workplaces were closed, flights were canceled. And everyone was thinking, oh, this is terrible. So millions of dollars were lost in commerce. But at another time, another place in the same area, the ski slopes were open. And people on the ski slopes were saying, wow, this is great. Now the slopes got all good snow and we're going skiing. And so, is the situation good or is the situation bad? It's a matter of mental concoction. That's all. This is good, this is bad. It's all mental concoction. Some people say this is good. Some say this is bad. It's all material. Therefore, it's all bad. <laughs> so, this, is, I mean, this, is, this is, I'm simply repeating Srila Prabhupada. I just, he was just driving this point home the other day, yesterday when I was listening to his lecture. He made this point over and over again. And in the material world, everything is bad because everything is simply mental concoction. And good and bad is simply a state of consciousness. So what makes it good or bad is somebody's consciousness. That's all. So therefore, it's mental speculation. Therefore, it has no value in
somebody somebody wins the lottery, gets a lot of money, you think, oh, this is good. Somebody comes along and kills them and takes their money. Oh, this is bad. <laughs> so, you know, the material world is can't you can't formulate a particular standard in the material world because everything is always changing, and therefore it's ultimately it takes one away from Krishna, therefore it's bad. It's mental concoction to say this is good and this is bad. The pig will eat stool and think, oh, so nice, so good. <laughs> but then the human being, when he thinks of eating stool, he thinks, oh my God, that's horrible. But the pig's enjoying it like crazy. <laughs> And if you take some nice sand dash and you give it to a pig, he won't eat it. <laughs> He'll just roll it in the dirt. And, okay, give me some stool. <laughs> There's people who can eat red chilies one after another and they think, oh, this is so good. And some of us, if they just even try to eat one, they're on fire and they're ready to call the doctor. Right? <laughs> So, so is it good or bad? It's simply one person's opinion over another. Everything in the material world is like that. This is good, this is bad. What's good is what can be used in Krishna's service. Right? Thank Krishna. You, Mata. Yes, Mataji, go ahead. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my questions. It's all good to share, Prabhupada. Uh, Guru Maharaj, do you have time for one more question or uh, is it okay? Real quick, because I have a, someone here <laughs> dragging me away to the next program. And I, 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 <laughs> have, I have an hour for that program and then I have another one after that. So okay. I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, um, just I want to seek your blessings today. It's my birthday today. Just want to take your blessings from you, Guru Maharaj. Please bless me. Okay. Well, you got all the blessings of all the devotees. Now they heard it's your birthday. You can put <laughs> your blessings on, on Srimati, who works very hard to make sure all of the, these programs go on. So you can thank her for that and uh, send her some birthday wishes, best wishes that. And she enjoys the cake they make for her, <laughs> whether it's good or bad. <laughs> <laughs> but just <laughs> yeah, thank you. All the best on your birthday. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. With, all, with all seriousness, we wish you well, not only on your birthday, but every day. <laughs> thank you, Guru Maharaj. Now I have a question for you. Yes, good morning. Tomorrow is a special class. Can you give me the information again? What time is it? Yes, good morning. The time is, I think, uh, seven seven o'clock or seven thirty. I think, good morning. Um, yeah, Shamlal Prabhu sent me the message. So will it be? Uh, so everyone is going to join that class, or uh, are we going to have two classes, good morning? Uh, seven o'clock in the evening. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. One second. I'll just confirm, Guru Maharaj. So it's uh, 7 30 p.m., Guru Maharaj. 7 30 p.m. Huh? 7 30 p.m. 7 30. So late. Yes, Guru Maharaj. It's with African devotees. Uh, okay, 7 30 p.m. So I'll only. So let's see, 4.30 to 5.30, and we'll do another one from 7.30 to 8.30. Uh, because it's Indian time, it works for everybody. So and all the people in the, in the Europe and in the U.S. can be on the 7.30 class. So let's make this class tomorrow. 
Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. I'll just um, announce uh, to the devotees uh, on the groups. Thank you. If you could talk to the African devotees and see if they can make it a little earlier, uh, that would be beneficial. But uh, I don't have any contact, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Tamlal Prabhu is coordinating. Um, Who is? Shamlal Prabhu is coordinating, Guru Maharaj. Um, I don't have any contact. We'll contact him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. But it's very short time, right? I was thinking um, whether it's possible. But I'll try, Guru Maharaj. Uh, I'll contact him. I'll let yes. you know. I have a special class on Saturday, too. It's at 6.30. Okay. The devotees from here, from Mayapur, is a special class here with the Spanish devotees. That's on um, Saturday, 6.30, and I'll, I'll give you that information. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Happy thank birthday. You. Best wishes and all glories to the devotees. Thank you for coming. And... All, <clears throat> thank you, Maharaj. And Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai, His Holiness Chandamali Maharaj Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Okay. Happy birthday, Mataji. Thank you, Prabhuji. Happy birthday, Mataji. Thank you.